The number one thing that most people wonder about when they're considering moving to Indianapolis, is it safe to live in Indianapolis? Hey, in recent years, FBI statistics have ranked Indianapolis as having among the uh, highest violent crime rates in the country. It's at the 97th percentile, meaning there's only 2% of all large American cities that are worse. Hey, some have gone so far as to label it Little Chicago. Indianapolis crime rate is three times the national average. But even with that, the state of Indiana as a whole is in the middle of the pack of states when it comes to uh, ranking crime. But the question remains, is it safe to live in Indianapolis? Our second step here is, hey, there are certainly some neighborhoods that are safe and there are, there are some that are a little sketchy or hey, you might be a little cautious about wanting to or thinking about moving there. Sometimes when I'm driving people around Indianapolis, uh, taking them from one place to another place that they might want to live. I've got to take them through some areas that they're not too thrilled about. And when push comes to shove, hey, some people, you know, they just don't want to know everything there is to know about Indianapolis. According to Saturday Night Science and a host of other sources, there's about 10 neighborhoods that tend to be ranked among the worst when it comes to crime in the city. But you know, I have my own litmus test. When I pull up, if I feel like I have to reach and put the bear spray in my pocket, then it's in my top 10 list or bottom 10, however you want to look at it. And sometimes I'm feeling like I wish I had a handgun tucked in my belt. Now I'll tell you why. These neighborhoods aren't necessarily in order. Um, we're gonna start on the near north, just uh, north of the downtown area. You know, and it's not always just about the criminals that live in some of these neighborhoods. Sometimes I'm walking into the backyard and there's just one too many pit bulls. God, they scare the daylights out of me. That's enough reason to carry bear spray. The second neighborhood is the Martindale Brightwood neighborhood. It's a little further east, like over at Keystone and 21st. And there's a reason why the juvenile uh, detention center and courts were built there. It was so the mothers could walk to see their kids. Years back, I had a number of listings there for an out-of-state uh, group. And uh, after there was a homicide in one of those, I'm not too keen about listing properties there if I don't have to. Okay, let's talk the third neighborhood. If you look at the crime heat map, it points out where some of these neighborhoods are. The Boss neighborhood or Beaux-Art neighborhood is over on the east side as well, uh, around Emerson Street. And like all the others on this list, you can think drugs and crime. And violent crime and property crime, they kind of go together side by side with the drug issue. The fourth neighborhood isn't all that far away. It's kind of surrounds 30th and Arlington. And for our fifth neighborhood, you can move up to 42nd and Post. I was doing a commercial inspection back there a decade or so ago, and uh, it was a self storage unit. And I'm talking to the guy in the office. He says, well, you're gonna get up on the roof? I said, yeah. And he says, well, enjoy the bullet holes. <laughs> There's a lot of guns in that area. Number six, let's go way down on the southwest side to Mars Hill. A couple years ago, I was doing a, uh, I had a listing down there for a client. He was turning his rentals over and uh, selling them. And somebody came in and actually bought one of those for an Airbnb. And I just like scratched my head, like, what are you thinking? But hey, they thought they knew what they were doing. So I pitied the people that were coming in from out of town and what neighborhood they thought they were uh, gonna spend the weekend in. For number seven, let's move up uh, just southwest side of the uh, downtown area, south of Lucas Oil there, down along, uh, the White River, the Concord neighborhood. There's a rendering plant there that kind of gives a foul smell to the area, and I think that kind of sets it off. Number eight is the Hawville area, just west of downtown, just west of the White River. It's a drug situation again, but I will say there's been a fair amount of revitalization in this area, and it seems to be the focus of uh, a new trend that's on a positive uptick. Number nine will take us up around the old Lafayette Square Mall. There's a reason why the mall's not uh, done so well. Basically, pretty well shut up. Hey, how do you feel about gunfire? And for our 10th neighborhood, we're gonna go to the old South Side. Nobody likes to talk about this because it kind of involves Fountain Square and Bates Hendricks, and those are media darlings. I mean, th there's even been a TV show about them, right? Really, these areas are not so much about violent crime as they are about property theft. 
Um, when I've done flips down there, you've uh, got to worry that you're about not leaving your tools inside overnight. You've got to have cameras on your building and even then you have break-ins. So it's a little tougher to flip there than it is someplace even though there's a lot of profit potential. So there you have it, 10 neighborhoods to go into only with your eyes wide open. Now these can change as gentrification marches on. Uh, you know, when an out-of-state investor calls in asking about a property, it's hard to give a quick answer. Sometimes I've got to go and look at it. I mean, these boundaries can change year to year and even month to month. And being just one block over can change everything about value and trends. You know, we have three kids in the Indianapolis city limits. Two are in gentrifying communities. Uh, the other in a suburban neighborhood. I'm still not comfortable with their choice because it's not just your block or your neighborhood. It's also about stopping to fill your car up or picking up a gallon of milk at the convenience store on the way home, or God forbid you gotta go out late at night to get something for a sick kid. But hey, I didn't listen to my folks either. Okay, step number three. You know, if you're needing or wanting to move to Indianapolis and the crime scene is making you feel a little uneasy, well, there are other options. Almost all of the surrounding suburban areas are darn safe. However, one stands out particularly, and that is Fishers, Indiana. It's located on the northeast side of the city. MoneyGeek.com just named the city of Fishers the second safest city in the entire United States for 2024. And that comes on top of safe suburbs having ranked Fishers the fourth safest suburb in the United States for 2023. And I can go back year after year for a good number of years where they were ranked by one organization or another as the safest or one of the safest cities in the U.S. or in the state of Indiana. Back when I was a high school wrestling coach, I coached this young man that went on to become a member of the Fishers Police Force. And when I'd talk to him about it, he'd say, hey, it's just boring. When you drive by a uh, traffic stop and there's four police cars with their lights going and everything, don't jump to the conclusion that uh, somebody's running guns or uh, child trafficking or something. Or Chances are it's something pretty mundane. There just wasn't much going on. Hey, if you are uh, relocating to Indianapolis, you do have choices. Whatever your choice is, let me know if I can be of service. So if you're asking, should I move to Indianapolis? Or if you're considering a move to Fishers, Indiana, you'll wanna pick up our relocation guide. It's free and there's no obligation. My staff and I have prepared the ultimate relocation guide and you can get your own copy below. Be sure to tune in every Tuesday we do a tour of new construction homes for sale. On Thursday we do a walkthrough of existing homes for sale in their surrounding neighborhoods. And on Saturday we give you a feel for what it's like to live in Indiana. So whether you're buying or selling, know that I work harder to make good things happen. Make it a great day now. Hey, if you found this video helpful, you'll love this next one. Watch it right now.